Uh, well, thank you so much for inviting me for the show and, and for the 15 minutes of fame, maybe. Uh, so very quick, I want to uh, center this uh, little starting conversation on one aspect of my work, which is the transition it has had uh, in, in, in the way it is addressing political issues. Um, this is um, an, an example of how I start my work. And in 1985, when Ana Mendieta died, I created a, pro a piece where I was for 10 years reproducing her work, all her performances, uh, for the Cuban artists. So it is a work that was specifically about Cuba, in which I was uh, uh, using, you know, using art as a way of accessing some knowledge that otherwise was impossible to have since we didn't have any information about her work uh, back there. Um, but what happened is like what, ha what, started as a, uh, what started as a personal homage to Anna became political because she was an emigrate, emigrated. So this is uh, a little bit how the process of my work went when I started doing art that was based on my own experience or kind of trying to use art to restitute the spaces of desire uh, or spaces of encounter. Um, and of course, that became political. So uh, following that, I, I kind of decided that the only art I could do was political because nevertheless, it was going to be interpreted that way. So I continued doing it in purpose. So then I, um, I work uh, also with this idea of uh, the personal um, using the history of the country as a way to, to use my work to reenact uh, or re, re, um, uh, re-establish a conversation of something that happened before. But at one point, I, it wasn't enough for me to work from my own experience or from my own body because uh, doing all these performances myself was kind of... Um, closing the opportunity to talk about something else that is, you know, the society, because it was very easy actually um, to be called feminist or about women instead of about everybody else's experience. So I, st I changed uh, this using my body by uh, start using other people's body. Um, in this case, uh, this piece is called Untitled Havana 2000. And uh, it was a piece where I used um, an old cellar for prisoners of conscience. And what I did is I turned off the light and completely covered this with sugar cane. And uh, people were, I'm going to pass this because 15 minutes is not enough time. So this is the image of the piece. So you, you enter there, it was absolutely dark, and you go towards one TV that has Fidel's, Fidel Castro's image. And then when you turn, you see um, the shape of this naked man um, that, you know, were uh, kind of guarding um, the video. And of course, this piece was talking about vulnerability and how, what, how different is vulnerability from the point of view of the people in power and from the point of view of the people who have no power. Uh, so in the, in the video, Fidel is opening his chest, so his vest, to show that he has no bulletproof. But really what happened, I mean, kind of playing with the, uh, this idea of, uh, of vulnerability, but what really happened is like then you have the real people in it that nobody sees because it's really dark uh, until your eyes get used to it. So, so I, I show this because then I kind of pass from working with my body, working with somebody's work, to work with my own, personal history to work with other people's, uh, with other people in the piece to work uh, about other histories or histories of other places. Like for example, this piece is a piece I did in the, um, the last Documenta in Kassel and it was a piece specifically uh, requested, commissioned uh, uh, for the event and it was supposed to be talking about the history of Germany. And I think this uh, was a very interesting process because being always kind of confined to just talk about a place as exotic for some people as Cuba, it was very interesting for me to go to another place with a very sharp history as well, like uh, Germany, and be uh, given the opportunity to talk to them about their own history, which is something I usually have to suffer 
in my own place. People coming to me tell me what my own history is. So I, I really like this uh, exchange of roles. Um, and what I did in this case was this piece with all these bright lights, and I kind of tried to animate it to kind of have the idea of what happened with the lights. So it was a very, it was 50 um, theater lights, uh, 750 watts, and they, when you enter the space, it's absolutely you know, bright in your eyes. And then you hear like somebody walking like this and cocking a gun. And what happened is like, then the light gets out after like uh, eight seconds and, and they go back again. And when the light goes out, there is absolutely silence. But if you are in a specific spot in the piece and your eyes get used to the darkness, you can see in the moment before the lights go on again, that that sound is not recorded, but it's real people, like here. It's kind of, this photo is very good because it does show how difficult it is to see the piece. So you can see the lights in your eyes, but then you can see this little kind of person on the back with the gun. So from there, I was, um, I was also realizing that I had a lot of work that even when it was political, it was kind of um, just um, just dealing with uh, the world of art, you know, like, like kind of the inside the institution. So I decided, um, one second, let me see if I can do this. So what I decided is, um, I don't know if this is, uh, I did one piece that was very important for me. I don't know, it's not running. Well, I did one piece that was very important for me where, where I went outside on the street dressed in this kind of uh, Inquisi Conde uh, icon uh, in which a lot of people follow me in the street. And, uh, and the, the thing is that the show was planned for the 13th of August, which is Fidel Castro's birthday. It was really for the 11, but, but that one artist wasn't ready, so we had to change the date of the opening, and the curator's birthday is the 14th, so she's like, forget it, I want my party on the 14th, I don't want to do the show. And I'm like, are you sure you want to do this on the 13th? Yeah, don't worry. I was like, okay. So I did this piece that is not running right now, and if we have question and answer, I'll, I'll look for it and find it. Um, where I dress myself like an Inquisi Conde, you know, uh, uh, fetish, and of course, in Kisikonde is used uh, to acknowledge promises that are not being fulfilled. Like if you promise the icon something, you want something to say, please, can this person come to my opening or whatever? And if you come, like bring you some flowers. And if you forget the flowers, you better run for your life because they, they, they kind of get really mad and go after you. So I, I use this uh, in the context of Cuba that day. And then a policeman, of course, I mean, the streets were really filled with police people came and said, what's, what's going on? Because there was like a bunch of people uh, following me. And they say, is that not work? And then the policeman said like, okay, proceed, proceed. And I was totally crushed because I was supposed to be doing political art, right? Something that, you know, kind of uh, will question the status quo of uh, politics and so on. And finally, I say, okay, something is, I mean, I was kind of depressed the last half an hour of the performance, you know, because I'm like, shoot, I do something that is not right. So I decided that I was doing something that was not exactly accurate and was that I was representing the problem. You know, I was representing the problematic on the dynamics of power in that society and in other societies because uh, I also work about Germany and India and other places. And um, what I did is I resolute to, instead of um, proposing to an audience uh, to share with me what's going on and kind of complain about it uh, and try to look for a nice icon, iconic uh, manifestation of an idea, I decided to take uh, the same tools, use the same tools uh, the power use. And in this case, this is a very old piece. Uh, this is uh, a newspaper I did. So what I'm doing right now is very different. I'm doing, I'm still consider my work performative and or performance, uh, but it's not working either with my own work, in my own body, nor the body of others. It's work with the social body. So, uh, and in this case, I also decided to take in my hands the same tools, this power 
uh, is using. In this case, as I said, it was the media. I, I did the illegal, of course, uh, newspaper in Cuba. Uh, and of course, it was shut down. But I did two issues, so that was very good. Um, so I did a newspaper that was uh, for the artist uh, to, to talk about the situation and, and, and the society in Cuba. And uh, more recently, in the year 2002, um, I created an art school. So as my work, uh, as a performance work. And in this case, uh, what I have done is, um, is um, I decided that, of course, um, I decided that um, that one of the most important tools uh, power has is education, and one of the best way to do political art is uh, one of the ways to do political art is to intervene in that process. And uh, what I decided is to create my own version of what should be taught for art, and that came, of course, as most of my work as a response of. Uh, uh, as a response of something that I'm not completely satisfied by um, in society or in their world. And this case was that I saw a lot of um, I saw a lot of young artists uh, doing work uh, that was basically copying our forums images, you know. And I decided, why if we have such an amazing uh, society and such a spe special uh, process to talk about, we should do international art in this kind of basic way where it's only looking like everybody else's work. Uh, so what I did is, um, is created that school. I mean, of course, in 15 minutes, forget it. There is no way we're going to see it. But, um, but, um, and what I, the thing about the school is to, uh -oh. The thing about the school is that I created a program in which not only the students, um, the, I don't call them students, I call them participants. Uh, the participants uh, create work that is engaged in ideological and political questioning of the system. But also I have visitors. Actually, uh, two days ago, yesterday, Thomas Hishorn left the school because he was visit visiting the school. So we had, uh, I don't know, a lot of people uh, coming from, um, from, for example, um, you know, scientists to sociologists to psychologists to anything, I mean, to artists, theoreticians, etc. And the idea is mostly to talk, uh, to, to kind of uh, create an art that is not engaged in this kind of, uh, in this kind of, um, how can I say, um, self-referential uh, creation of visual, contemporary visual art, where mostly a lot of work is just referencing other work or, or kind of in the same circle, but to look at creativity in any media in, and kind of going from uh, in the middle place between uh, all the ways in which uh, humans uh, manifest and the ideology. You know, how can you uh, talk about ideology in different manifestations? Another piece is um, this last piece, which is, uh, oops, sorry. This last piece, which is, oh, that is, I just did it for um, the Moscow Biennial, one second, uh, three weeks ago. And it is also, again, a piece where I try to establish an institution. Uh, or try to use um, the knowledge that has been created to, to kind of, uh, um, you know, manipulate people's lives by, by the government and the power. And in this case, what I did is, um, it's kind of quick, I'm sorry. They told me I had 15 minutes, so I was <laughs> So what I did here is uh, to create a piece in Russia, which is a trust workshop. And the piece will be a year-long piece. And the idea is to, uh, uh, we are inviting an ex-KGB agent to uh, deliver uh, a workshop for Russians. Uh, so he can use all the knowledge he got as an agent to screw people's life. Screw is not good to say. Okay, whatever. 
that's not good what I do either. Uh, so, so to damage people's life and um, and use all that knowledge and that training to reestablish uh, some sort of assertion and some sort of uh, um, confiability, you say, and trust uh, to the Russians who are passing through a very complex uh, socio-political moment. Um, and that trust can go from their families, partners, to the president. You know, it can be any level of trust. But of course, I encounter a problem, which is if I'm doing a work that is specifically the audience is the target audience is the Russians. How can I translate that to the art world? And that was a problem I had to solve. And in this case, what I decide to do, and it's the first time I do it just as a try, and I think um, I'll do it again, is to three minutes, okay, is to is to create an opening ceremony. So people can, so it's almost like a way for me to announce to the art world, okay, guys, I'm doing this project. You might not see it, but uh, just that you know that I'm doing it, okay? Uh, so it is kind of an opening ceremony, and of course it gives you a chance to be a little bit more loose and more, you know, than if you do the actual uh, piece. And in this case, I was, I don't know if you were able to see, and I'm going to be very quick, uh, but... Um, for the opening ceremony, what I had is all these, they, were, they had two options. You can see from the outside or you can go inside. If you go inside, you encounter these uh, Russians who are actually every day in the Russian, uh, the Red Square, and they work for tourists. So what happened is that um, they are there, so as a tourist, you go, you take one of those animals, they take a photo, and you pay for it. So what I did is I bring them to the space, and we pay them a hilarious amount of money for them. Uh, for being one, uh, two hours in the space. And of course, people could go and have their family portrait, you know, in Russia. And uh, there were Russians, foreigners, anything. But the, on, the detail is that these people had these photos taken with a photo on the back. I don't know if you see this. And that is uh, the Iron Felix, which is the guy who invented KGB. So it is kind of, it was very funny because people were so excited about having the animals and so like having such a good time that only one person out of 76, one person only asked who is this person. And only another person who was Russian entered and when they saw this, they say, I'm sorry, I cannot do it. Okay, so it's 76, 74 didn't even notice. So it's, it's kind of this. And I've been told it's finished. So thank you very much. <laughs>